I'm sure everybody has some curry that they love, but if this isn't on that list, then you're missing out on one of the most satisfying curries of all time. Today we are making the Japanese curry or kare, whatever you want to call it. This should be a part of your curry map, so to speak. If you enjoy eating any kind of curry in existence, period, then this has to be on your bucket list. It's the textures, it's the thickness, it's the velvetiness, it's the way that it just makes you feel good and warm. And we're making it two different ways. We're not just going traditional, we're doing a very untraditional, a little fancier version, which you'll see in a little bit. So with that being said, let's make this, shall we? Far too frequently when a Japanese curry is made, you'll see these instant curry mixes like this. I get it. Okay, it's convenient, blah, blah. But you know me. That right there, that's going into the atmosphere. And we're making our own Japanese curry roux. But why, Josh? Because I said so. And because it allows you to fully control the flavor at as much intensification as you like. It makes a massive difference in the final product. But let me just show you. Anyway, to make your very own instant curry roux, you'll start with a small saucepan and add one cup plus two tablespoons or 242 grams of unsalted butter. Set that over medium heat. And once fully melted, stir in one cup or 120 grams of all-purpose flour. Let that cook stirring often for about five minutes or until it turns a nice golden color. At that point, you'll stir in half a cup or 58 grams of Japanese curry powder, half a teaspoon or half a gram of cayenne, half a teaspoon or half a gram of cardamom powder, one teaspoon or two grams of fennel powder, one teaspoon or two and a half grams of turmeric powder. Stir that together and toast until all the spices become very fragrant. About 30 seconds. Pour that into an eight by eight baking pan lined with parchment paper with some slight overhang, you know, <laughs> nothing better with a good old parchment dangle. Spread it around nicely and chill in the fridge overnight. The next day, just plop that solidified failure out and cut into one inch squares. You see how easy that is? Let's look back at this instant curry mix. You're using this to save yourself like five to eight minutes of work for what? For less flavor? Now for the actual curry. First in a medium sized pot or large saute pan, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan. Heat over medium high and add one large yellow onion cut into third inch slices. Do not add salt yet, trust me here. Just cook them stirring often. Look at some char, some color, and continue cooking with that process for about four to five minutes or until your onion is nicely colored and softened like this. Now you can add your salt to taste, followed by five cloves of garlic, finely chopped, one inch naba ginger grated, one small Fuji apple, peeled and coarsely grated. Give it a nice mix and then add one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs that have been cut into one inch cubes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's the searing of the chicken, Josh? Look, in most cases, searing chicken makes sense, right? Flavor intensification, blah, 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 blah. But in this case, I like the chicken to gently poach in the curry to provide a lot of its lighter flavors to the overall dish. The char from the onion will get us a cleaner, deep flavor. Look, this is all wizardry. Just allow it to happen and trust me as your guide. Then add one and a half tablespoons or 22 grams of honey, one tablespoon or 15 grams of ketchup, two tablespoons or 33 grams of soy sauce. Mix and finally add five cups or one and a half liters of chicken stock. Stir that all together, bring to a light simmer, then add two large carrots, cut rangiri style, which in order to do that, you literally just peel your carrots and start by cutting one slice on a bias, quarter turn the carrot, cut the same bias, quarter turn, bias, and repeat. See, that's it. It's super easy and it looks nice. Next, three Yukon gold potatoes, peeled and either quartered or cut into eighths. Optionally, you could add a splash of shirdashi for that extra good lord have mercy. Then just leave that to simmer over medium low heat for 15 minutes or just until the potatoes are cooked through. Now you add your curry roux, which don't just toss it in there, right? There's a technique here. Get a nice deep ladle, hold it in your hot curry broth, let it fill up, add a couple of squares, stir that in using chopsticks or a whisk, and keep stirring until dissolved. Pour that into the broth and repeat a few times until it begins to thicken. Then at that point, you can start adding squares, constantly stirring gently so you don't mash up your vegetables. All right, no, you want to keep those veggies whole. And you'll keep doing that until it's flavored to your liking. I added nearly all my roux, but hey, you know, you could always add less. Now just season that bad boy to taste with salt and, well, serve alongside steamed rice. Literally that easy. You've seen me make rice a million times. One to one ratio, water, rice, rice cooker. Obviously, the rice has been washed. You press the on button and done, right? But wait, it doesn't stop here. Since this unctuous, luxurious curry stands before us, we might as well level it up just a little bit higher. Let's say Katsu Secreto Benedict with a Japanese curry hollandaise. You're gonna need a second belt if you're wearing pants. Good Lord. First, our Katsu Secreto. You're only gonna need about one pound of pork secreto, and you can get this special cut from a lot of places like Regalis Foods, but mostly online. Pull it out, season it taste with salt and pepper, and get your trio to katsu station set up. One bowl with one cup or 60 grams of all-purpose flour, another bowl with one egg plus one tablespoon or 15 grams of water whisk together till homogenous, and one last bowl with one cup or 60 grams of panko breadcrumbs. It's the perfect breading, isn't it? Sorry to the English. 
Coat every little crevice with your all-purpose flour first, shake off the excess, then dip into your egg mixture until completely coated, and finally coat the entire thing with panko breadcrumbs. Please, <sighs> please, when I say coat the whole thing, I don't mean coat most of it and it's okay if it's not fully coated. No, it's not okay. Take the dang time to coat it. It's crunch factor on the line here. Love, Papa. Now, just carefully lay that bad boy in a pot filled about halfway with fry oil. It's around 350 Fahrenheit and let that fry for five minutes. Now, while that's frying, we can poach our eggs, get a medium pot filled about halfway with water, add a splash of white distilled vinegar, season to taste with salt, and bring up the heat over medium high. As soon as it comes to a boil, reduce that heat to medium so it's a little bit less harsh of a boil. Then using a spoon, create a whirlpool in your pot, stirring one direction, increasing speed gradually. You know, this thing is like an F1 car going around the god dang track. Once you have a nice vortex, quickly but gently pour your egg into the center of that vortex, which the nature of the centrifugal force, I suppose, will help the egg white wrap around the yolk. Then let that lightly poach for four minutes. Remove with a slotted spoon and drain on a paper towel. Repeat this process two more times for a total of three poached eggs. At this point, your katsu's done. Gaze into its tantalizing sizzle. You can hear the crunch just by looking at it. That's a proper fry. Let it drain on a paper towel. Hit it lightly with salt to taste while still hot. Now for the curry hollandaise. By no means is this a traditional hollandaise. It just has a, the feel of a hollandaise, but with curry spice. Now, you'll simply need about two cups of your curry sauce, minus any vegetables or meat. You don't want to really add that to your blender. Any potatoes that make it into this blender will turn your sauce to glue, so make sure they're not in there. One more thing, make sure the mixture is hot. Hot, hot. Now, begin blending that bad boy on high, then add three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of unsalted butter, about two tablespoons at a time, as it's blending, allowing it to emulsify in between each addition until you've added all of your butter. That should leave you with the most beautiful, velvety, smooth, creamy colored curry hollandaise at this point. Season a taste with salt as needed. You can optionally pour it into a squirt bottle. Let's assemble this beauty. Ideally, you want a nice crusty loaf of sourdough and a proper hearty slice, you know, like three quarters of an inch thick. Then just toast your bread in a pan with butter over medium heat till nice and roasty toasty. Once it's toasted, brush your bread generously with spicy chili crisp because I'm just naughty like that. Top with your katsu, followed by one, two, three total beautifully poached eggs. Now generously drench that in your Japanese curry hollandaise. Top with a little bit of shimi togarashi, some thinly sliced green onion, and of course we got an egg yolk test, right? You know, give them a little doink, doink, doink with a knife. <laughs> Hello. Come around here often? Let's just take a moment to just relish in the beauty that's in front of you right now. The fragrant curry, the perfectly cooked eggs, the crunch of both the toast and the katsu. All right, less talk, more taste test. Two Japanese curries, two different ways. Who would have thunk that this could be a Japanese curry? We do have a katsu curry that's basically the emphasis of the sauce and the flavors, but this is a traditional kare curry. It's so balanced. It's salty. It's sweet. It's got the umami, and I'm talking emphasis on mommy. You don't need this. The power of this can be harnessed, and where? Where do you manifest that power? You manifest it in here. Your chest cavity. This hands down is a perfect meal, and during the winter time, I don't even give a f hot summer. I don't care. I want to eat this every day. But this, I've got a Japanese curry hollandaise, make you want to go on holiday. I got lots of hollandaise extra, so why not load it up? You know what I mean? I love hollandaise. Does it still have a crunch? <laughs> oh. I'll let her speak to this. Hey, girly. You like X Benedict, right? Yeah. That is so freaking good. The flavors, the textures, that was my first choice. Well, you haven't even had this one. Today. So I can try both? Yeah, you can try both. I gotta go with this one. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm actually glad you said that because that just goes to show that tradition is beautiful. And guess what? Not just tradition, tradition without prepackaged bullshit. Do you wanna know what else is better than tradition? B roll.